$1,518 each and every month for Social Security beneficiaries. I have all the details and what you need to know right here in the video, so let's get right into it. All right, now in this video, I want to talk about a proposal that has been floating around Congress for quite a while now to increase benefits pretty substantially for millions upon millions of Social Security beneficiaries, where we currently stand, what they're doing with this, and what this would mean for millions of fixed income beneficiaries if they actually did this. Let's get into it and talk through all the details. However, really fast before we do, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe by hitting the button right down below the video as it's totally free to do so and because I am your one and only daily advocate. Not only that, because we are rapidly approaching 500,000 subscribers right here on the channel and it would mean so much to me if you subscribe down below. Please remember, I am here for you right by your side each and every day to keep you updated with everything going on as things are changing very rapidly during this very busy, confusing, and uncertain time that we're currently living through. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. And also remember, it is my promise, my dedication, and my commitment to you and everybody right here in the community to be here every single day. So again, let's get into it and talk about what's going on here, the proposal floating around Congress, and how this would increase benefits very substantially for a lot of people in the event Congress comes forward and actually does this. All right, so here's what I want to talk about, and this proposal has been floated around a lot in Congress, and they've talked about it a number of times, and I want to shake out all the numbers because now that we are in 2023, obviously we're a few months into the year so far, here's what I want to talk about because every single year that they delay actually doing this, it simply means higher benefits for the beneficiaries who would be eligible for this in the event Congress actually does it. So by all means, Congress, continue waiting. It just means the payments would be bigger and bigger for the beneficiaries. They would actually get these payments. So not kind of a, you know, not exactly a bad thing at the end of the day, but we all completely recognize as well, people need money right now, not in like six months, eight months, nine months, a year, two years. People need money right now. Anyway, let's talk through the proposals. Again, there's a ton of proposals out there in Congress. There are a ton of them. In fact, if you've been watching the videos here on the channel for any length of time now, you've seen me come back literally a couple times a week. Hey, look what Congress is up to now. Look what they just introduced. Look at the new bill. Look at all these things that they're talking about. I mean, literally, it is every single day that I'm back with you breaking all these down and letting you know what's going on. So there's a lot of proposals. But this one out there is where they want to increase benefits 125% of the federal poverty line. Let me break down the numbers on this because as we know, I talked about this earlier in the year as well, which is the federal poverty line has adjusted significantly higher this year in 2023 versus what it was last year and the year before. It continues to increase at about five to 7% or even a little bit more each and every year. So that's why I said earlier, the longer that they wait on this, the more that they would have to pay out in the event that they actually do it, right? Higher the benefits. All right, so let's talk through the details about this. All right, so here's what it comes down to. This year in 2023, the federal poverty line for an individual is $14,500. $80 divided out on a monthly basis is $1,215 each and every month as an individual and the federal poverty line. Okay, but remember, the proposal and what they've talked about is increasing Social Security benefits up to 125% of the federal poverty line. Okay, well, that changes the metrics a little bit. Let's run the new numbers on this and what this would actually mean. All right, so again, we need to understand what the federal uh, poverty line is for 2023 as an individual. Now, here's the thing as well. The federal poverty line for an individual is different than what it is for a couple, and it is for a household of three, a household of four, a household of five. It's different. Here's what's interesting about the federal poverty line. The federal poverty line does not simply double for a household of two and triple for a household of three and quadruple for a household of four. It doesn't really do that. It's interesting because the federal poverty line for an individual is actually, um, you know, that 14,580, but the federal poverty line for a household of two is not, uh, what would that be, 29,160? I think that's what that is doubled. I'm just kind of roughly adding in my head right now. Um, it's not that, it's not doubled. So kind of interesting, but I'm specifically talking about it on an individualized basis here, just because, you know, so we all are consistent with the numbers here. But here's what it comes down to. The $14,580 divided by 12 months is that $1,215 on a monthly basis. However, if we now multiply this by 1.25, we come up with a number of $1,518 each and every month is what this would shake out to be 
in the event that Congress actually passes and, and uh, boost benefits up to 125% of the federal poverty line. That's what the numbers are. 125% of the federal poverty line is $1,518 each and every month. Not bad, right? That would be pretty nice. Now, don't get me wrong. Here, let, let me give you some other statistics about this and let me show you what is actually going on and how quickly that money would disappear. In fact, right now in the United States, the average rent across the entire country, now this is the average. I know that some rent out there is say maybe $700 a month, some is 2,000, some is 4,000, some is maybe 600. I get it, this is across the board, but this is the average. The average rent in the United States right now is $1,300 a month. In fact, to be fair, it's a little bit under. It's $1,290. $95 a month is the average rent in the United States. Okay, let's run the math on that really quickly. If the average rent is, say, $1,300 a month, and they boosted benefits up to, say, 125% of the federal poverty line, that would leave the beneficiaries $218 a month for basically all their living expenses, right? That doesn't really leave a whole lot. So again, it brings us back to the main question, which would be, Okay, then what are low income and fixed income beneficiaries doing right now when the average rent is that level and the average benefit is not nearly that high, at least for the people here in this community. Now, again, we see all the reports out there right now saying, oh, but wait, the average retiree, social security retiree is getting $1,801 each and every month. Okay. That's the average retiree. But again, I've seen benefit amounts down below in the comment section, which by the way, please do not leave your benefit amount down below. That's not my business. It's nobody's business to know how much you're getting on a monthly basis. So please don't leave that down below. But I've seen those numbers thrown down below before. And I don't know if I've ever seen a number coming in at $1,800 for a social security retiree, right? So anyway, these are the numbers and this is what they're coming out to be as far as um, what the average is. Now get this, the average social security disability beneficiary as well is getting a little bit under $1,500 a month. So um, in this case, you know, an SSDI beneficiary and say average rent is say $1,300, this leaves the average disability beneficiaries about $200 a month for living expenses. Now, again, here's the cool thing. Well, I shouldn't say like, you know, being low income is it's tough. You know, living on a fixed income is tough. However, as a low income or fixed income beneficiaries, there are programs you can take advantage of if you fall into this category, as in things like LIHEAP, the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. There's the LIHWAP, Low Income Water Assistance Program. There's the things like ACP, uh, Affordability Connectivity Program that pays for your internet. Um, there's rental assistance in some instances. There's utility assistance. There's all kinds of other assistance programs. There's the SNAP program, Supplemental Nutrition assistance program. There's things like this. But again, I completely recognize that this is not always feasible for everybody. But at, at the end of the day, at least there's some of these programs that are out there to help low income and fixed income beneficiaries. So these are some of the programs that are available. But at the end of the day, remember this much as well. In the event that Congress comes forward, and let's just say that they boost benefits up to say 100% of the federal poverty line or 125% of the federal poverty line, as I'm discussing here in this video, remember this. And again, all of you know this, which would be, oh, but wait, that would be nice. But guess what? They're probably going to take away SNAP benefits, a lot of them. They're probably going to take away some other benefit programs, maybe like utility assistance, housing assistance, rental assistance, um, things like that. So again, that would not be a very you know, fun situation. At the end of the day, just like what we see with the COLA, yep, the annual COLA is nice, but um, you know, does that mean that they just go ahead and take away all of your other benefits? Well, in some instances, sadly, they do that, right? So we've seen it before, like at the beginning of this year, when the 8.7% COLA came into effect, how many of us were impacted by the reduction to SNAP benefits? Yep, pretty much everybody, right? So. Anyway, I want to bring this to your attention. This is yet again another proposal in Congress to boost benefits. There's also the other one out there, the Social Security Expansion Act, where they want to increase benefits by $200 a month and a variety of other changes out there as well. So anyway, just want to throw these all out there. We've got to continue watching everything because Congress is on this mission right now to continuously uh, propose virtually everything, to continuously bring everything to the table, and eventually something will eventually stick. What that's going to be, we don't know quite yet, right? That's why we got to continue watching everything so incredibly fat, uh, closely. So 
Anyway, I'm here for you. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Uh, make sure to share this video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel. Until next time, please enjoy your day. Take care, and I'll catch you again later in the next video.